the Malted Man Cave. We're on our second review of the evening. And our second review, we're going to be doing a Connoisseur's Delight. It's a big one. We're going to be doing Lagavulin 16. A uh, little bit about Lagavulin. Lagavulin was, um, I believe, officially opened in 18 or founded in 1816. It's currently owned by Diageo, um, which you know owns half Wong, the distilleries Wong, yeah. in the world. Um, Lagavulin 16 is one of the classic malts of Scotland, which is nothing more than a marketing scheme that Diageo does to, to promote their brands. But hey, this is a very, very good whiskey, so we're not gonna dog, we're not gonna dog Diageo too much tonight. <laughs> so because they, it's not as good as it used to be, according to myself and from others that I've seen online. Um, but it's still a dang good whiskey. So another couple fun facts about Lagavulin 16. Um, it's not crazy, crazy peated, but it is fairly heavily peated. They get their peated barley from the Port Ellen Maltings on Isla. Um, I think Lafroy and a, a couple other of the Isla distilleries, that's where they get their peated barley from. One of the things that Lagavulin, a lot of people think gives it the unique taste um, that a lot of connoisseurs pine after is that they're known for a very long fermentation process. So up to <clears throat> 55 hours, I believe. Yeah, 55 hours, I believe. So. You know, once they have kind of the wash mm -hmm. and they add um, the yeast, the different yeast strains, you know, sometimes it can be as short as, you know, 48, 36 hours, sometimes even shorter, hmm. but they actually leave it in there to ferment for a very long time. So a lot of people think that that gives it like a unique taste. And the other thing that they do a little different um, than most distilleries is on the second distillation, it's, it's very, very slow. I, I looked it up to kind of figure out um, what the exact time um, frames were and they didn't have it but supposedly it's just a lot longer than, than some other distilleries so um, whatever they did or whatever they they've been doing and are doing now this they is figured a, it out they, they figured it out <laughs> it was kind of funny because you know Dave you don't dislike no. peated whiskeys no. but we went from drinking Glendra on a cast ring which is not peated at all to this and Dave was like whoa <laughs> this is definitely different so um, without further ado and enough blabbering, let's get into some whiskey. Funny story about this is, I think it's, here go ahead and you pour it. <clears throat> um, it's no secret that I used to hate peated whiskeys. I love peated whiskeys now. Um, and I, for my anniversary, probably three years ago or so, and this was still when I pretty much only liked non-peated whiskey. I went to the Scotch bar called Manifesto in Columbus, Ohio, and someone poured me, and you know, I was like, hmm, Lagavulin, 16, you know, I'm gonna get my fancy scotch, and scotch, scotch, scotch. <laughs> scotch, scotch. And I went to, to, to nose it, and then take a sip, and I absolutely hated it, because I was like, you weren't I was that. ready for like a Glendronic 12 or 15, like this smooth, just like fruity, chocolatey, and all of a sudden like, just like freaking, <laughs> But, hit in the face with but, but you drank all it, this right? peat and sackcloth and hemp and all these like earthy notes. Um, so no, I, I actually, to my shame, people are going to subscribe. I like didn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I look back on it now, I'm so ashamed. Yeah. Because um, I love it now. Yeah. Yeah. But at the time I hated it. So what do you get on the nose? Oh man. Um, right off the bat, peated, uh, definitely peated, smoky. Um, Along those those ends, it reminded me of walking into the wharf. Um, it just it's it reminds me of 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 pipe tobacco. Mm -hmm. um, packing some old man packing some tobacco in. That's one of my notes that I got too. Um, sitting in a leather chair reminds me of a of an old leather chair. Just the uh, the fragrance of that leather. And then uh, the last one, and I think I got this on the Aberlauer. Um, I kinda, you know? I think so. <clears throat> kind of iodine, uh, antiseptic. You mean kinda. Ardbeg? Ardbeg. That's, <laughs> Aberlauer is not peated. Th right. That's the second time I've said that. <laughs> where I mixed Mistake, them up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and actually, Ardbeg. I to Ardbeg. me, Lagavulin 16 is like a more milder, more aged, and less sherried version of Ar Ardbeg Uvidal. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. So for me, oh, it was so good. 
<laughs> on the nose, I get burnt toffee. Mm. Burnt toffee, like in burnt biscuits, light raisins, and as you said, moist chewing tobacco. Mm. And I get even a very unique, almost like savory umami, like olive, olive oil or olive, black olive note. Next one I put is bourbon. Imagine if there was a sackcloth bag that was like soaked in bourbon. <laughs> That's like I'm imagining. I like I, it. If I smelled a sackcloth bag with bourbon just soaked in it, that's what it smells like. Subtle white pepper, <clears throat> cinnamon, a little bit like this awesome salty smoke. Black tea, figs, allspice, and I gotta credit um, the whiskey jug. If you guys haven't found that um, blog online, it's this awesome, awesome, awesome blog that I can't remember the gentleman's name. Um, it's, it's called the whiskey jug, and he does a really, 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 really good job. Um, and he actually said Novocaine, and there is something about this that it has this kind of, kind of numbing Novocaine. <laughs> It's, you know, it just reminds me of like a, anesthetic. A, a, yeah, like a medicinal something. Yeah. So, shout out to the whiskey jug. I got that from him, but it definitely is in there. And then in the background, there's these like kind of faint apples, oranges, mm -hmm. vanilla, wood shavings, and if you let it sit in the glass for a while, it kind of you, the sweetness really comes out. It's almost like confectionery sugar once it sits in the glass for a while. So that's what I get on the nose. Okay. I got all those things on the nose as you were saying them. <laughs> Did you really? <clears throat> or are you just mocking me? No, no, I'm being serious. But I mean, when you're looking for them, it's easier to be like, oh yeah, it does. Mm, mm. Palette. That's so good. It's probably one of the easiest uh, drinks there is as far as the how smooth it is what is the AP oh yeah on this? I forgot to unfortunately this is chill filtered and I think it's colored as well um, it may not be colored they normally Diageo yeah. normally Diageo does add color but I don't know why they would even need to right you because know, it comes in a it's colored bottle, bottle but I don't know Diageo um, 86 the, for yeah, 43% ABV. Um, there's a guy, um, what is his channel's name? Oh, frick. <laughs> he said something, like, I literally was watching his video and I started dying laughing. He said that Diageo, <laughs> they would color and chill filter the elixir of life if they found oh, it. Oh, <laughs> I remember you saying that. Yeah. I can't remember, what is it? Dang it. Oh, I'll put it in the description. Um, so, palette for me, uh, Right off the bat, strongest note for me, it reminded me of um, around the holidays, um, salted chocolate, um, really anything. I was going to say pretzels, but what I was looking for was that chocolate and salt combination. Um, now, is that salt come from the the water? The... It's you know, it's on island. Yeah, yeah. So it definitely gets the maritime. Which actually, I said in one of my videos, is that a lot of people think. And I do think when you take the cask and you, you know, mature them, that they, you know, when it's near the coast, you're like soaking in mm -hmm. all that sea salty. Yeah. And I do think that that affects it. But I think you get more of that sea salty maritime from the peat that they use. Yeah. That has absorbed all that the sea salt. saltiness and yeah. maritime qualities. And that's, you know, it's kind of, it's both of them. But I think it's more the peat than necessarily mm -hmm. the environment. Yeah. So, right. So those, those <clears throat> two um, reminds me of fresh ground pepper. Um, <coughs> smoked gouda, which is probably just the smoked mm, the gouda. Gouda. Um, we we love gouda at my house, so gouda. Um, I put herbal tea down. It kind of reminded me of it. It might have been that medicinal kind of that um, chloroseptic, like the mouth. Yeah. Um, sort of a, a hot tea kind of remind me of a herbal tea and then I couldn't get over how smooth it is mm -hmm. I mean it's so 
easy to drink and it's it's delicious too so it's kudos to Lagavulin for keeping this at 16 years yeah you know a lot of yeah, distilleries they, they want to do like 15 or 14 by the looks of it they're not backing it off anytime soon either so no and I, I definitely think Lagavulin hits its sweet spot at 16 years of age yeah. what'd you get on the palate so I get let me take a sip real quick Just a delicious, sweet, like cereal maltiness. Mm. It's like really smooth. It's not like as astringent or like popping just because it's more rounded and refined and aged. A little bit of coffee, cocoa, smoky marzipan, um, pipe tobacco again. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the wharf he said, like yeah. you're walk, walking into a smoke shop. A, a quality good, yeah. not yeah. some white trash. Yeah. Like give me some. Give me a hard pack of reds. Give me some uh, Virginia Slims. <laughs> uh, slight biscuits. This guy drinking it, smoking his long Cruella de Vil cigarettes. <laughs> Puppies. Mm. Barbecue brisket. A little bit like smoky mm. barbecue brisket. Yeah. Again, hemp rope, oak. <laughs> and again, I get a little bit of that like, sackcloth dryness that I think is probably more from the oaky, you know, yeah. wood vomit, but something yeah. it reminds, about it reminds me of sax loss. <clears throat> and then lastly, a little bit of sweet maple syrup to round out the palate. Mm. Good stuff. Mm. Um, I have like one sip left. What do you get on the finish? Uh, same kind of notes as the way that it came for me. Um, the, the peated, the smokiness, the... the <clears throat> salted chocolate um, uh, once again it has a little bit of that iodine type taste to, to the end of it yep. it's not a bad thing um, either um, medium length for me it doesn't stay around too long for me but I can definitely uh, it's definitely on my lips for a while so yeah yeah if the ABV was higher if it was non chiffler I bet it would stick around for a little longer yeah so, how are you? For me, the finish, it, it's, it's not real quick, but it's definitely not long. I would say it's quick to maybe towards the moderate, but nah, I think more just a quick Just finish. a quick. Quick, and it, it just tastes a little watered down. It's, no matter how, this is a really, really good whiskey, but yeah. it would be a lot better at a higher ABV. If it's at 46 or like 50% ABV, it would just be absolutely amazing. Um, on the finish, I get a little bit of black tea, a little bit of that, that figgy, figs note again, smoky and burnt toffee and biscuits, a slight cola note that I didn't get on the palate or the nose, but mm. it was a little bit on the finish, and again, that sweet maltiness. So mm. this is a iconic, legendary whiskey that a lot of connoisseurs pine after which I hated at first, but now I definitely do love it. Um, so, what would you give this at a score out of? Zero to 100, Malted Man Cave Mark <coughs> for Davey B. An 88. 88? An 88. I think I'm gonna give this a solid 89 out of 100. If it was at higher ABV and yeah. not filtered, it would probably be a 91 for me. Maybe yeah. even higher, depending if this was cast strength. I could get used to drinking that, um, but like you said, it's it's just missing a little bit of yeah kick. Yeah, yeah. I love the fact to, that to like to like perfectly round. It's like this, it's like this masterpiece that is missing just this chunk of it, yep. and it would be so much. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, question of the night: Are we gonna do? The songs? Yeah, let's do it, man. Top three? Top three songs. I need you to go first. Man, I, I, have, I haven't even this. thought about them either, man. Um, <clears throat> well, I'll... I'll what was that? <laughs> Truly Madly Tiefling. <laughs> Top Abby three. and I's song. Oh my gosh, eighth grade. Eighth, seventh grade. <laughs> Who? I wanna stand with you on a mountain. <laughs> Who? Who is I the band? I wanna be with oh, no. you in the sea. <laughs> We've, we've, um, been, we've had Savage a Garden, days. man. Savage Garden. That is not in my top three at all. No, uh, me either. Um, I would say top three. Um, 
I grew up on big band music. My my father is a uh, oh no, not Manhattan Transfer. <laughs> <laughs> little Manhattan Transfer. <laughs> little, little. No, I'm, I'm gonna say uh, my my first song is uh, Glenn Miller, <clears throat> uh, Pennsylvania Six Five Thousand. Anyways, uh, Glenn Miller, pretty much anything Glenn Miller. Um, I can't say one just because that reminds me of my childhood. And yeah. It's like. And it's so much fun. I put it on for the kids, and they're like, what is this awesome big band? Yeah. Big band sound. If you don't even know what that is, you should look up big band music and just listen. It's it's a good time. Um, I think, so, my first one would be Goo Goo Dolls, Iris. Oh. I love that song back in the day. Dude, I... I mean, I still love it. I just haven't, obviously, listened to it. Have much. you ever been to a Goo Goo Dolls concert? Uh, I have. Didn't they just come to, to Huber Heights not that long ago? Probably, oh, I, I remember driving on yeah. 70 and kept on being on the sign. I think I saw him on the we sign. Yeah, oh, the roast. The I think roast. it was this past summer. Yeah. Um, number two for me would be... Um, man. I would have to say... Uh, Life-changing songs for me would be... DC Talk, Colored, DC. colored People. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, second one for me, and you know what, even though we're calling these our top three, like, yeah. if I sat down on any other night, I'd come up with another top three, these are just ones that are coming to me right now. Um, what is the name of that song? It's like, they're a British band, um, Oasis. Oh, yeah. Was it, is it Wonderwall? Yeah. I really like Wonderwall. Or is, is Oasis a song, or is it the band? Oasis the band, Wonderwall. Um, now my mind's going. The Champagne back. Supernova. Well, that's Champagne Wonderwall. Supernova. Wonderwall, I think, is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like the yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, that's a fantastic. That's my one. second one. Um, <clears throat> my third one would have to be. Um, man. I would say. Probably Hallie and I's song when it, uh, Brian McKnight <laughs> still. <laughs> nice. That was a good song. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to think. All right. Another one. This is more of a fun one. Blackstreet, no diggity. No diggity. No doubt. About to bag it up. <laughs> People in Europe are be like, what the frick? <laughs> Who is Blackstreet and what is no diggity? <laughs> it's kind of a hip, hip Have hop. Have you, uh, 80s and night in the late 80s, 90s. Well, uh, mid 90s. I'm sorry, that wasn't. 80s. Have you ever heard of Chet Faker? Uh -oh. Chet Faker. He does a remix of. It's pretty good. Really? Yeah. So, those are my top three. I'm Put, sure. List yours. List yeah. your top three. List your top three. If you have any other and questions then, of the night, for yeah, us. they don't have to be your your most favorite. Just whatever comes to the top of your mind. For sure. I don't have my glass anymore. There we go. To Lagavulin 16, go out and get you some. It is delicious. Good I wish stuff. it was bottled at a higher ABV. You know, maybe not chill filtered, but it's very, very good. Go out and get you some. Have you thought about like making your own mixes down here? Your own. You know, it's really funny you say that because I actually there's a group of guys that um, we call it the Review Crew, and you you know yeah, them, yeah, like yeah. Scott and you know yeah. Scott says dummies, you know all those guys, and I just wrote to them because I <clears throat> I had a little bit of Compass Box Peat Monster that I forgot and I took Glendronic 15 which is a really really like well-known sought-after expensive um, sherry whiskey yeah. and I poured it in <laughs> and I was like no because they're completely different whiskeys yeah and, uh, yeah and like on top of that Glendronic 15 is like really hard to get and it was actually amazing because <laughs> it took the sherry whiskey yeah. and like a little bit of like smokiness to it so if you ever uh, want to try some blending, um, get Glendronic 15, a little bit of Compass Box Peat Monster. It's get crazy stuff. So, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, cilantro.